Okay, we are at this uh, volcano here. Let's see what we got here. Ah, uh, place looks dangerous. Oh, I knew that was gonna hurt. Uh, I gotta get to the other side. Just, just front it out, bro. Ah, in a fight. These are not new enemies, are they? Uh, let's just do some... They're probably all weak to ice attacks. Although I'm pretty sure we're dealing with old enemies. You suck, Yuna. Oh wait, you actually pulled it off. <laughs> and a level up, I love it. Not the worst level up, it's a lot of HP growth. Strength is always good, and agility and luck. Not a lot of HP growth. Intellect, which is useless for a thief, as far as I can tell, and luck. Ah, shit. Uh... Gray Ooze. Are these the ones that are weak against physical attacks? Or the... Okay, these are the ones that are weak against physical attacks. There's gray and there's green. The gray were weak against physical... The green were weak against magic attacks. Fortunately, I don't have to burn magic killing these things. I just smack them around with my weapons. It's the first regular episode of anything that I've been... Re oh my god, look at this environment. <laughs> regular episode of anything that I've been record tried recording since I lost my hard drive. Fortunately, I didn't lose anything as far as this series goes, because I didn't have any gameplay saved up. I did lose my old videos, though, which is unfortunate. Um, not for this video, this series... Oh, monsters. Not for this series, but I was planning on for some of the other ones, like the Final Fantasy VII Remake series of taking all the gameplay footage I had and then editing it down into some kind of, like, uh, fan trailer. And, unfortunately, I lost all that footage, the old footage. I still have the... Not worried about it interrupting... Oh! Armor. Not worried about it interrupting my... Uh continued series, but uh, I already have that. It does kind of suck that I'd have to recapture all that footage if I was going to try and make a trailer for that. Ooh, nice. The enemies here aren't proving to be all that powerful. Although they can grind you down, I guess. Ah, of course. Monsters. We fought these before. So, of course, I did something stupid. <laughs> through trying to play through this game, I have been doing a live commentary where I go and I record the commentary as I play the game. It feels a little bit more natural that way, even though I have less freedom when it comes to editing out dull parts or whatever. Fortunately, I do occasionally make mistakes, and I made one here. I fail to notice that at a little after three minute mark, my microphone cable fell out of my microphone and the thing stopped working. So I continued to play, talking, all of that kind of thing, and I uh, wasn't actually recording what I was saying. Got the gameplay, got the game audio, didn't get what I was saying. So I'm not gonna be able to even remember what the hell I said, because that was a few hours ago went back to edit this later, but, you know, here I go. So, I'm going deeper into this dungeon here, and, well, it does get a little bit difficult because I don't know the way through, and I see all these different treasure chests, and I want to go and I want to hit up all of these different things, but I kind of got a, ooh, a greatsword, that's not useful though, is it? Most of the equipment I found here isn't really useful for me, so I end up not using it anyway. Hmm. 
I want to get all these treasure chests, but I don't know my way through, so I spent a lot more time getting into unnecessary fights. The kind of thing that happens the first time anybody plays through these games. They're always a little bit more frustrating than they will be second time playing through. So that's always how that ends up happening. Though this version is probably a little bit easier than the original NES version. I feel like they're giving you a little bit more experience points, and you no longer have missing uh, misses when you attack um, defeated enemies. So that's a bit of a plus. I guess it really doesn't make the game actually easier, but it does make it so you don't have to think as hard. <laughs> anyway, I was talking about how I had lost my gameplay footage for a lot of the different things I had recorded. Now, the Final Fantasy VII gameplay footage isn't actually lost. The remake gameplay footage isn't actually lost uh, because it was recorded on a separate device. It's, all the footage is on my laptop right now. I can just transfer that over easy and easily enough. Um, I lost some Witcher 3 gameplay footage. I'm not too worried about that. No one really watches that. Uh, there wasn't really anything else. The big thing that it didn't occur to me at the time, but it did come to my attention a few hours ago, was that I had also lost the bulk of the source files for Stormbreak. Now, if I... If you don't know what I'm talking about, Stormbreak was a game project, an RPG that I was working on for the past several years. I came up with the idea for the basic layout or design of the story some eight years ago, eight or nine years ago. And I said, you know what, let me let me give this a try. So I started doing a lot of work and I was using the RPG Maker, which is a bit of a novice tool, but it, it worked well enough. And I was working on that game there, but the scope of the game was honestly just too big. Too big for one person, or at least too big for a person that wasn't experienced enough with the tools or anything like that. So I stalled out a lot on it, and I had some periods where I would lose interest. It's a shame, though, because even though the scope of the game was too large, I feel like I would have had it finished by now if I just maintained work on it. So I had originally intended it to be four, um, four separate chapters. It's weird that I'm standing there, not moving. What was I doing right now? <laughs> I expected to be four separate chapters, and each part is it like a different, like act in the story in a, in a sense. Well, I had gotten through the first act, and I had begun work in the second, which is the the point where I was playing through. But when I began developing it, I had um, I had a different philosophy than I ended up having later. I wanted to ha that's a lot of treasure chests there. I wanted to have it uh, built in a way that I was completing every part of the game that I was working on, developing the map completely, populating it with enemies, doing everything other than balancing the difficulty. Filling out all the NPCs, putting in the dialogue, and having the story progression in there. So I would build a town, I'd build it completely. I would put all the NPCs in there, I'd have all the story branching aspects, and of course I'd have the main plot play out before you could even move on, and before I started working on the next section of the game. And then I would move on. Now I did this for a few towns, a few dungeons, all that kind of stuff. And I thought it was working out pretty well. A little more linear than I had expected the story to be, but it, I feel like it was working out pretty well. Eventually, though, I felt like that wasn't the best way to do it. And I started switching my process to be, you create the map, you create it like a bare bones. You make buildings, all that kind of stuff, but you don't really populate it with NPCs. You more so just kind of build out the town and put in just enough effort to 
have the main story progress through. So all the plot critical stuff has to be present. And then I thought that I would be able to go back through there later and fill out, fit it out basically, polish it up and all that kind of stuff later. And that, with the less time I was spending on the game, allowed me to pro continue to progress through development of the game so I wouldn't lose interest with it. Because I was getting worried that if I spent too much time working on individual parts, I wouldn't maintain interest enough to keep working on it. And that kept me going for a little while, but then I ended up getting through the end of the first chapter, and I moved into the second chapter, and I started uh, a couple of towns I put together, and there's really just where you start your beginning like dialogue scene when you get there, when you get to the other side, what happens at the end, and I didn't even populate it with enemies. And I'm like, I'm looking back at it and go like, oh, it's going to be so much work to fill this out later. And then, since I had taken, this was done over a period of a couple of years, I go back and look at some of the earlier parts and I realize, you know what, I had learned so much. Got so much more experience with doing this over the years that I was working with that, that the earlier parts of the game just didn't look or work out all that great. Like, okay, you know what, I can go back and I can just sort of rejig them to make them a little bit tighter. But part of having all gained all the experience meant that a lot of the things in the way I was constructing things in the earlier parts of the game just didn't make sense to me anymore. And I mean this in the more technical sense. Like I would have a an object, say this be an NPC or something like that, which goes and moves around and says something or whatever. And for some reason, when I first started working on this, I had a weird complex set of variables being set and then if statements with each character performing actions based on what value came up and then they would read that and determine what action they would perform. Like, Alright, well that worked. It certainly worked because it's what I was doing. And apparently that made sense to me at the time to go and do that. But I found it difficult to understand what the hell I was actually doing and what, like, okay, well, I set set this variable to an integer value of 8. Okay, what does that do? What exactly does that do? So I gotta go and I gotta search through all of the different objects in order to see what is performing what when that integer value was set to 8. Oh my god. Not as easy for me to track what is going on with every value that's being set. You gotta take a lot more time. And I didn't have any documentation, didn't no notation, anything like that. And it made sense at the time, and I was able to keep track in my head what everything did at the time, but I completely forgotten by the time I go and really revisit it. So changing around things that happened in the beginning as I changed my mind on what things should look like became difficult. And even some of the stuff later on where I'm like, okay, I'm going to fill out this area with NPCs and all that. It was still set up kind of in a confusing way. What I really should have done was I should have had a sort of a kind of a plot counter kind of thing. Just one integer value which would be incremented as you hit different plot points. And it would be this which was based on that... Um, character actions and stuff would be based on NPC actions and dialogue and all that kind of stuff. It'd be easy enough to keep track of where something had to be, and then you increment it, sort of like old basic code, where you would have a instruction counter, and you would increment it by 10 with every new instruction you fed in. And you'd do that because, like, you would have nine values in between those 10 that you would be able to, like, add in extra stuff if you had to. I didn't do anything like that. It's what I probably would have done if I had started over. It's kind of a shame, though, because I really would have wanted to um, take everything that I had finished, even though it was in a wildly unfinished state. 
and just publish that to let people see it if they really wanted to. But it's gone now. I think it's gone. It's possible that I could have a backup of something somewhere, but maybe I shouldn't even bother looking for it. Maybe I should let that dog die. Because I wanted to try something new. I wanted to move on from Stormbreak, and I wanted to try... Um, maybe do it again, but based on everything I had learned in the time since. Plus, there's like those newer versions of the tool set and everything. Maybe even try doing it in something like Unreal Engine or Unity. Or, hell, perhaps not even have this weird delusion in my head that I can pull something like that off. Hell, I can't even... Can't even make a YouTube channel that anybody wants to watch. Why the hell would I think I'd make a game that anybody wants to play? Anyway, I'm talking about the wrong freaking game here. I'm playing Final Fantasy and I'm talking about Stormbreak. Oh, this dungeon. <laughs> it's a grinder. I mean, you... Most of the enemies that I ran into in this dungeon weren't really all that powerful. They, they didn't really pose that much of a threat. But, like a lot of the dungeons, the dungeons were long. They were uh, confusing. They were labyrinthine. They, you would spend a lot of time wandering around trying to find your way through. Thanks to the random encounters, you get into a lot of fights. It whittles down your health. It whittles down your magic reserves. It whittles down your healing items. And as you get deeper and deeper into the dungeon, you start to get a little bit nervous. Like, do I, in fact, have what it takes to get through this? That's, I think, where the true difficulty in this game comes from. Because, like any, like most RPGs like this, it kind of... I, I've heard some people say that there's, like, really no true difficulty in any RPG like this, because everything is just based on how strong you can make your characters. And that's not really true, because there's certainly strategy involved in the combat and planning out, like, what you upgrade or equip your characters with or what spells you use at whatever time. But there is a certain truth that if you spend a lot of time grinding, your characters get stronger and eventually you can just overcome challenges by method of brute force. Maybe that's what I could have done here. Like, uh, fighting my way into this dungeon and then not being able to complete it properly and retreating back out. Every time you do that, you gain something. You characters gain levels. You gain money. You potentially gain the equipment that you found inside of there. So your characters get more powerful every time you go in, retreat out, and go back in. Here is where I found some actually some useful stuff. Got a lot of these kinds of monsters here that not mimics or anything, they're just monsters in the case. But you get items. What did I get here? I got the uh okay, money. Ugh, monsters. Flame shield. Now that was useful. Increases defense. No downside. Fan frickin' tastic. What do I get here? Ice brand. Oh, is that a weapon? Yes, it is. Both attack and accuracy is increased. Fantastic. You know, I don't know if there's actually any elemental effect to it, although it certainly looks like there is in the fight. But this is like a huge gain. So it's not just you gaining levels and you gaining money, you can buy new, uh, more items and all that kind of stuff. Increasing your character's defense and increasing your attack power makes you substantially stronger. So, if I had to retreat back out of this dungeon again, and then rest up and then go back in, I would be in much better shape. I would have... I, I struggled a bit towards the end of this, and especially in the, during the boss battle, to beat it. But if I left and then came back, especially if I knew where I had to go, I would be able to just cruise back through here I wouldn't have nearly the difficulty with the enemies that I ended up with. And I would run out the other side. Much less difficulty. 
What is up with these guys? <laughs> you know, he doesn't look like a worm to me. Gained quite a few levels while I was running through here, too. And a lot of money. I mean, usually I get a little bit disappointed when I pull Gil out of a, a treasure chest, because I feel like what you should be finding in a treasure chest is some kind of treasure, not just money. Items. Um, equipment. That kind of stuff. But I have been running into a, diff a problem every time I run into a new... Every time I run into a new um, town... And I have all this new equipment that I could potentially buy. New swords, new armor, whatever. Not having enough money. So, I guess finding a thousand gil in a treasure chest isn't really as bad a news as it seems. <laughs> now, I imagine I'm going to end up going to a... Sort of like an ice temple next. And the ice brand... Provided this is actually providing some sort of elemental attack and isn't just... Well, staff, that's useless, though. Some sort of elemental attack. Maybe it's just a physical attack with an elemental effect because it's called Ice Brand. Maybe that sword will be useless in the next dungeon and I gotta go back. Now, here is what had me. And I'm doing that because, like an idiot, I just sort of crept down... In, some, in each direction, and there's the spokes that go out from the center where the stairs are. And each one has a room in it. But I'm just watching the minimap. So everything looked like a dead end to me. So I go down that way a little bit, and then I take a look at on the minimap, and I see, like, oh, it's a dead end. So I, so look at this. I go down there, and it looks like a dead end, so I'm like, ah, oh, shit, go back. Then I go another way. I go another way and I have my fights. Oh, looks like a dead end. Keep going. <laughs> Turns out there are rooms over there. <laughs> and, uh, and I go down every one like an idiot and not... <laughs> I go, dead end. Better go back. All these fights, all these fights, all these fights that I really can't afford to get into. Dead end, dead end. Not really dead ends. Well, they are dead ends, but there's at least, like, treasure chests or something in those corners. And I'm going to have to come back into this place later and see what's there. But I'm using up my health, I'm using up my magic, I'm using up everything. And these damn red dragons deal a lot of freaking damage. But they can, that one didn't. And then I, like, ah, oh, damn it, you know what, just see what's there. And what do you know, here's where the freaking boss was. Of course, another friggin' red dragon. Bastards. And here's the boss. This is the... What, what was it called again? The Fiend of Earth. Mer Merilith? I don't know. But it's some kind of a Naga creature. Unfortunately, by the time I got here, I didn't have much in the way of magic remaining. And I didn't, I, since I'd never fought this thing before, I didn't, uh, I didn't know what it was, well, obviously it was going to be weak to ice damage. But I didn't have much in the way of actually, um, uh, having any ice my magic left. So... Hit it with that. Like, oh, awesome. But then, uh, not too long into this, Cloud gets hit with a hold spell, and he's basically useless for the rest of the fight. Not doing much. Only get a couple attacks off, and then, boom, get, get hurt. Now, cast Protect, but this thing doesn't seem to use much in the way of physical attacks. Can't use Blizzara. 
So I try using all these different status effects on it, and none of them land. Look how much damage this thing. Fire. Oh my god, look at all that damage. This status effect doesn't work. Protect isn't really useful because it's not using physical attacks. Although you think it would with all those swords it's holding. So what do I have? Oh, well, I can do Quake. What do you know? Quake is a physical attack, isn't it? I mean, it's a magic attack, but it hits. And now Cloud is held, so he can't do anything. Quake does nothing. So now I just have Riku doing uh, physical attacks. And I have Vivi doing magical attacks, but I don't have any good ice spells, so I gotta use end up using thunder attacks against it. So, my thief is doing poor damage. My mage, my black mage, is doing reduced damage because I don't have the proper spells anymore. And I have a white mage whose physical attacks are basically useless, but has some number of magic spells which you can use to heal. Huh. And really just a, uh, a warrior who is only there to take hits, not deal any damage anymore. And this fight would have been a lot easier if Cloud could do any attacks. So, this is not the most elegant fight that I've ever had. Although I will make note that I do win this fight. I'd say barely. Because I was running really low on magic. I was kind of expecting Cloud to eventually emerge out of the hold spell like it would wear off. But it never did. Sixty-two damage, that's it. Like, look at this. Just throwing fire. Throwing fire around like it's nothing. And I can use Thunder or whatever, but that's not as powerful as a good ice spell. So I gotta keep... I gotta have Yuna keep everybody healed. I gotta have Vivi just... Throw out. Okay, so now I don't, I don't have any good Thunder spells, so I gotta use these weaker ones. Then I try Hold to see if maybe that would work. Because some bosses and some RPGs are actually susceptible to status effects. Turns out this one isn't. <laughs> Gotta, I'm like careful not to accidentally throw a fire spell at it because that'll probably heal it. Eighty-two damage with seven hits. Pathetic. Sixty-one damage with that thunder spell. Fifty-nine. <laughs> oh, and Riku's down. So now, oh, Riku's out of commission. <sighs> I do have a Phoenix down. But I also have Life Spell. Let me use Life Spell instead. Even though that might actually be a mistake. Everyone's taking so many hits. It's pathetic. Riku's back. Thunder spell. Get your attack in. Of course, it's not going to work, will it? And Riku's down again. But I win the fight, so... <laughs> you know, all's well that ends well. Had I known what I was doing going into this dungeon, or into this, even if just into this fight, I could have done a lot better. And that's it. So you hit this thing, you can teleport out of the dungeon. That's a big plus. I don't have to fight my way out. And we've done the Fire Dungeon, or Mount Glaug, or whatever the hell it's called. But anyway, that's the episode there.